It's our great pleasure to have Matt Stewart here with us this evening. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that Matt's wonderful prints are on the walls and they are for sale. They're all signed. If you have any interest in those, please see one of us here at the store. We also have Matt's book, uh, which are the last copies of the first press yep. yeah, of the book. Yep. And I think there's uh, a pretty limited amount left. So should you have interest, please see one of us again. They're selling for $45 and Matt will sign them uh, yep. after the talk tonight. Yep. The unsigned ones are more valuable. That's right. <laughs> so uh, here to introduce Matt and tell us a little bit more about him is uh, the director of Leica Academy North America, Tom Smith. Tom, where, where are you? Thank you. Sorry. Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, it's my distinct pleasure to get to introduce Matt Stewart to you all. Um, but first, I'd be remiss if I didn't say uh, what a great team uh, that you have here at the Leica Store Miami and what a real treasure they are. Those of you who have been here before and have been a part of lectures, I'm sure you know this and welcome back. Anybody who it's your first time, I would encourage you to get with uh, Peter or David Farkas and really find out about what these hands-on learning opportunities or lectures that they run on a monthly basis are all about. Uh, again, my name's Tom Smith. Uh, I run the Academy for North America, and these guys are, are kind enough to let me come down and do workshops on a regular basis. Um, Peter covered a lot of what I wanted to say, but I wanted to go back in this introduction and just say, you know, if I had known Matt Stewart in 2005, in 2005, PDN, Photo District News, named this guy one of the top 30 photographers to watch. And over the ne next 10 years, if I had gone back, if I could go back then, what I would have done was I would have bought a print. Because over the last 10 years, what's happened is his work has become highly collectible. It's been mentioned and featured in some of the seminal books on street photography. And this book that Peter mentioned, the last remaining first editions are here in the store. Don't be like me and wish you had bought a print or bought a book. Buy that book tonight because it's the last of the first edition. And in a time when long-term projects, no joke, are considered a few months long or in worst case, a few weeks long, this work and the work you see on the walls is after more than 10 years of working on the streets of, New of, of London. And Matt is connected to the history of photography. And I w don't think it's an understatement to say that you'll look back at what he's going to share with you tonight and remember this as a point of inspiration. Uh, you have a rare opportunity to pick his brain a bit uh, for this informal Q&A. Your participation is hugely important in making this a success. And I know you guys will, will do that. When I look at Matt's work, I often have the reaction of, uh, he has a talent for capturing things that I wish I had captured as a photographer. Uh, so I, I first, as a photographer, that's my first reaction is, I, I wish I got that. Then second, it's, hey, what's going on? And thirdly, does he use a stuffed animal, uh, a pigeon, in his pictures? Well, you all can ask those questions now. And without further ado, I need a new, uh, you're my agent, this guy, I want this guy. Without yeah. <laughs> further ado, I turn it over to Matt and to all of you to ask him questions. Thank you all so much for coming tonight. It's like such a pleasure. It's, it's really top. Um, thank you to Leica Miami. Thank you to my new agent, Tom. Um, so it's great to see you all. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to do like an informal talk around the pictures. Feel free to ask me any questions along the way. Um, I started, so I'm, I was 42 on Monday. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Just giving them my age. Yeah, okay. I'm an Aries. Um, I'm uh, an obsessive. So this is the main thing um, about doing this kind of work is that you have to be obsessed. You have to do it every day. You miss most of the stuff. And occasionally you get something that's worth taking home and showing to somebody. Um, I do this uh, only for me. I don't do it for anybody else. Uh, maybe for my mum, but mainly for me. Um, and it's something that I do every day. It's like a, it's an itch that has to be itched. And um, so I'll talk you through some of the pictures. Feel free to ask any questions. I had this, I, I, just double checking, no. I thought I was having my flies were on top. <laughs> it would be a really bad start, but anyway. So um, I'm going to start with this one, which is the, um, not the stuffed uh, pigeon. Um, thought I'd talk about how uh, I made this. I was talking to someone a minute ago about um, the different ways of taking these kind of pictures and um, a lot of it is to do with waiting. And I spend a lot of time uh, kind of getting bored and hanging out and just 
uh, you know, seeing what's happening, finding a spot and staying there. This particular spot uh, is Trafalgar Square. Who knows London? Who's been to London? Trafalgar Square is a big, you know, open s square where all the pigeons hang out. And um, this particular picture um, is on the front of Street Photography Now, which is a book that um, has lots of street photography in it. Uh, and I spent about half an hour waiting for this picture. So I'm just going to just sort this stuff out here. Here we go. So what you do to get this kind of picture is you do this for a while. <laughs> so you kind of have to have no shame, all right? <laughs> this is the main thing. So hang on. <laughs> yeah. So you do this. You do this. OK. And you do this, and I'm seeing all your feet now. You do this for about half an hour. And um, you, set, you spend so much time down there that the pigeons start to think that you're not a human. They start to walk very close. And um, so I, I was like, wow, the pigeons are getting really, really close. I'm going to stay here longer and longer and longer. And then eventually one came really close. And I pressed the button, and I felt something happen over here. Okay, but I'm not going to um, BS you. Uh, I didn't really see those legs happen. I saw the pigeon. I felt something click over here, and it, that felt good. Um, but okay, so I'm not going to be that guy that that uh, sort of makes out that he's some. Yeah. Did he crop? No, this is all. This is how how it was. Every, pretty much everything is uncropped. So what were you trying to shoot? I was trying to shoot legs. So I was looking at legs, looking at legs, looking at legs, and then a pigeon walked past. And then he, and then he, walked, he, he walked that way, and he walked that way, and then he walked that way. <laughs> and this one, um, the legs happened and the pigeon happened. But it was an extremely lucky shot. Um, but with this kind of photography, you have to be sort of out there doing it. And uh, Gary Player, who knows who Gary Player is? He's a golfer. He said, um, you know, it's funny, the, the more I practice, the luckier I get. And it's true. And so you have to be out there doing it, and then the luck comes to you. So um, this is the second picture. I really only do good pictures of birds. Um, <laughs> and this picture, as opposed to half an hour, um, this picture took six months. Um, and so this was walking past this advert every day for six months and thinking, wow, that's a great advert. And um, on the day. Uh, that I got this particular shot. I was with a guy called Joel Myrovitz. Anyone know who Joel Myrovitz is? Yeah. Right. So um, this was like the best day, my best photo day ever, this, this, this shot. And sometimes it happens when you're with these great photographers, like they give you this energy and something happens. And on this day, um, two weeks before, I'd had an email from Joel, who I'd never spoken to in my life before. 2005, when the PDN um, came out, and he said, Matt, um, I really like your work. I was like, yes, yes. Um, I'm coming to London. Yes, yes. Um, and do you want to go and take pictures? <laughs> Let me just speak to my secretary, Joel. Uh, anyway, um, so we went for a walk. Uh, he's a lovely guy, really inspirational character. And we went, I, he said, you know, take me on your route. Let's walk the route that you take your pictures on. And we walked and walked and walked. And on this particular day, so I've been walking past this for six months. And I'd had pictures of it coming out of cars. I had pictures of it with ladies wearing blue coats and blah, blah, blah. None of them were quite right. But on this day that I was with Joel, someone had dumped um, a skip in front of the peacock. And I said, Joel, look. And he's like, oh my god. So I, like, yes. I said, it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, cool, cool, cool. And uh, took the picture, and it's one of my favorite pictures, but also one of my favorite photo days ever. Um, anyway, so moving on. Um, and this one um, is every now and then what happens when you're doing street photography is that you start thinking in your head, oh, I've seen it before. It's been done before. Um, I can't be bothered. Ah, I can't be bothered. So on this day, I saw a guy without a head. Okay, and he was walking down the street, and he was some sort of headless guy, you know, being. Put, but he was he was some sort of thing. He was being taken somewhere by someone to be a headless guy, 
And I saw the headless guy, and I thought, oh, I can't really be bothered with this. And then I, th and I thought, you know what, okay, I'll give it a go. Yeah, yeah. You run after it. He's moving along, they're walking along. Yeah. Um, and I took it home and I thought nothing more of it and then I looked at the negative after taking the picture and noticed there was um, a little patch of light with a, a shadow head and I didn't see that at all and but those kind of pictures are the the pictures that give you a gift uh, give you a little present um, and so for me that's one of my favorites because I didn't know what was happening really uh, I did not make her drop the chips, just to get that clear. She dropped the chips already. Um, I, the two red things, she was eating in the corner. I think it's really interesting how we do these weird things, like eating food in the corner of a busy street. And so I saw the red turban, I saw the red chips, and then she turned around. And do you think she swore at me? Do you think she yeah. gave me a hard time? Yeah. She didn't. She went straight back to eating her, her, her Big Mac, no problem. It's just a, it was a glimpse. Um, this one. Um, I was going to say, you should, whenever you see something, you should take lots and lots of pictures of it. Don't ever think you've got it with one. I don't know. Does anyone... I, I mean, you have to be really amazing to just take one picture and walk away. This is one of the things I learned, uh, is that the decisive moment has lots of indecisive moments surrounding it. Um, this one, I took 20 pictures landscape because uh, I saw the cross. I was like, wow, there's a cross. But he's asleep. It's fine. I, no, I can't see his face. I'm not doing any damage here, I'm, I should take this, this is great, you know, took 20 pictures, walked away, and then I thought, ah, didn't get it, didn't get it, went back, turned the camera, there was another cross here, which was a bonus, bit of colour, and that one, uh, that's one of my favourites. Um, How do you know you didn't get it? Well, I knew I didn't get it, and I just went back and I shot, kept shooting, kept shooting, kept shooting, I just, it didn't feel right. But now I got it, I'm so happy. Took this one about two months ago. Um, just single eyes. It's quite complicated, this one. Um, there's a, a dog's eye, there's a reflection's eye, and there's a lady's eye in the bus. Um, I get off on that kind of stuff. Was that, was that one shot? <laughs> no, so this is like 20 shots, you know. So I shot, I shot loads landscape, and then realized that it should be portrait. portrait. So shoot as much as you can. I think is if you can, because you really get bummed if you if you don't get it. This is following. You have to, when you see something weird, you got to follow people. And this guy had a what is it? I don't know what it is. A weasel? A ferret. a ferret. He had a ferret on his shoulder, and I followed him. I shot about a roll, and then the ferret fell off the shoulder and hung <laughs> by its neck, and momentarily. And so that's the moment it fell off. This man has the funny nose. Um, this, you have to kind of look around this one. This guy's got a funny nose. And he was doing that for a long time. So I spent a lot of time there. I'm giving away all my secrets. Um, this man, just like this man, was feeling tired. <laughs> and I heard him yawning on the other side of the street. So it was like a really big yawn. Like, really, really loud. Do your loudest yawn, Jared. <laughs> anyway, it was a loud yawn, and the other thing with street photography is every now and then, uh, if you miss it, it happens again, okay? And so this is something to bear in mind. So I heard him yawn really loudly, he went, Aah! and I thought, he's going to do this again. So, so I ran, and I got to him about here, I was using a Leica, um, so I set the focus, and he yawned again, and there he is, yawning. But it's beautiful, the, the music, you know? That's all music I need. Thank you. You can come again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and this was lucky. But you have to be out there. I take, I was going to say, one of the, one of the things that um, I think is important with street photography is to have triggers in your head, like things that you respond to. So maybe you respond to, um, well, you always respond to animals. Um, you respond to, I respond to people yawning. I respond to um, color the color red, and I respond to people's hands. So throughout these pictures the whole time, there's things that I respond to, triggers. Waiting to balance a man on, t on the front of a taxi, 
waiting to fit a man inside a box, a lot of waiting. I call it fishing. It's like fishing. You just... Um, and so, so there's three Fs, all right? There's fishing, where you do this and you just wait, and you find the background and you just wait. And then there's following, where you, like with the ferret, you see a man with a ferret and you follow him, <laughs> like that. And then every now and then there's an o another F, okay? It sounds like duck. <laughs> <laughs> And this is one of those, when you're just walking down the street, and you go, hell. <laughs> and there he is. So um, there's a guy who's he's part of some promotion, having time out, waiting there. This guy's got a clamp. He turns up. He picks a ticket off. And this guy, you look at this guy's face. He's, he, he's sad for this guy. Um, but it's, and then you just go, wow, this is crazy world. So that's, a, that's a, the third F. Um, this is just the, um, the, the, the kind of mess that we, we find ourselves in. This guy's lost. This guy know, knows where he's going. I love hands. I love body language. This last one um, is, uh, again, it's body language. He's, I guess he's trying to get the dog to do something. Right. I took about 16 pictures here with a 28mm um, Elmarit. There you go. I even remember the name. It's good. Um, and so that means I was this close to him. And every now and then with uh, this type of photography, people don't know you're there. And that's one of the greatest feelings, is like if you were going to have a superpower, <laughs> invisibility, flying and invisibility, it's toss-up. <laughs> I've never flown, <laughs> but invisibility is really great. And so um, to be somewhere, take lots of pictures of something, and then walk away is a real um, privilege, and it's a great feeling, and it's one of the best things about doing street photography. Um, and this one <laughs> is a follow, all right? But it's also a don't use a eye... Um, what is it? The I, iPod? Don't use an iPod, iPod when you're doing pictures, okay? Because this is a schoolboy, and he was having a conversation with his friend who said, um, why don't you do your somersault? Just do your somersault. And he said, oh, I'm going to have to practice it on the grass first. Um, and uh, so I'm going to go over to the grass, and I'll try it on the grass. And I'm being not creepy, but I'm like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really? Okay. okay, yeah. And so I followed the schoolboys. It, sound, it sounds, it's getting, it's it sounding bad. Um, and I followed them to the grass, and he, he had one attempt. He, and he, did, he was upside down here, and then he landed and he slipped out. And he didn't do it again. But had I had an iPod in, I would not have heard the conversation, wouldn't have taken the picture. Um, and I love that everyone else doesn't really know what's happening, which is kind of... Lots of people think it, it looks a bit like a Banksy. Yeah. Yeah, like a, one of those yeah. sort of pasted on. There, yeah. pasted on. But um, that's a, a decisive moment. Um, and that was one frame. What caused you to choose color as opposed to black and white for street photography? Um, so many great black and white photographers. Just <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. many great yeah. ones. Yeah, I mean, you just look, yeah. you look through the history of, of photography, yeah. street photography, and they're it's all so good. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, man, I can't. Okay. Yeah, this, you, 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 you're up for hiding. I feel you. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, and I think that's me. Any more? Any other questions? Yeah.